my very first video was not about simulation theory. It was just about the Phoenix. It's called Weapon in the Dome. Uh, it was originally called Flat Earth Apocalypse. But uh, it's all about the Phoenix, the Phoenix history, what to, the, how the elite know, know it's coming and how they're preparing for it. It's very detailed. It's about a 45-minute video. Now, I had a really bad motorcycle accident within days of doing that video. I did not release another video for a year. When I came back to YouTube a year later, my entire perspective had changed. I had reanalyzed all my data, all my beliefs. I had, and now everything made sense because formerly I had put things, I had shelved things under the table that I wasn't going to reveal to the public because there were anomalies and they actually, they were counterproductive to my own theory. And the main thing was, was the fact that Phoenix appears in mid-May at, like clockwork, every 138 years since the year 4309 B.C. That's impossible. It's not possible. Even in a Newtonian uh, universe, it's not possible for that type of astronomical precision. But it's true. Especially not possible because we have evidence that the number of days in a year in that period of time since 4309 BC has changed at least twice. The year for over 2,000 years was 360 days. The entire vapor canopy world, all the calendars, the Vedic, the Sumerian, the ancient Egyptian, the old, the old Mekwishe, Zapote, all of them, were three were divisible by 360. Even the Mayan Bactin of 144,000 days, a Mayan Bactin is divisible by 360. 360 was the ancient draconian year under the vapor canopy. So our year today is 365 days, 0.25, a quarter of a day. This is where we get our leap year from. This has complicated everything. But if Phoenix appears every 138 years over the past 5,800 years, how is it possible that Phoenix appeared in 1626 in the month of May and bombed the hell out of ancient China, sending stones from the sky, killing Taoist priests and all kinds of stuff? How is it possible that 138 years after that, in the month of May, Half a million Europeans looked up and saw the sky darken as an object passed in front of it at the exact same time in the month of May that an astronomer Hoffman was looking at a telescope and watched something pass over the sun's surface that covered one-fifth of the sun's surface. Whatever that object was, it's so gigantic that when Hoffman reported it to the Royal Society, they said it wasn't true. But they entered it, they entered it in in the minutes but they said it's not possible because anything to have covered one fifth of the sun's surface that was as far as Venus was so truly giant. It would have been a planet the size of Jupiter. So, and it's not possible for something that size to have come into the inner system, according to the Newtonian physics models of the Astronomical Society in 1764. How is it possible that 138 years later, in the month of May, so much stuff happened to, to the world in 1902 that I was able to produce three different videos here on my YouTube channel all about the year 1902 and everything that happened. So many things that happened that Charles Fort in 1930 wrote a book and he said, 1902, the other dark age. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's impossible. The year had changed. There's no way. Therefore, Phoenix is a cataclysm protocol. It's a part of our holography that cannot be altered. Something else is changing events, changing calendars, changing timelines, and even introducing phenomena like micro-apocalypses in different areas, micro-resets in different areas to throw us off the calendar. Phoenix is keeper of the calendar because every time a Phoenix episode happens, we now know exactly where we are in the 138 year holography. Phoenix, now, my new interpretation as accepted about a year ago is that Phoenix is not a weapon against humanity, it's a weapon against the living dead and the elite. But Phoenix has never harmed the holy, and this is something I should have saw way before that. 
It's another reason why I have adopted simulation theory. Because simulation theory accounts for the fact that different timelines can be using different types of years that have different measurements, and yet they all coalesce on the exact same key dates. Only, only in a hologram can disparate pieces of information coalesce without contact. Only in a hologram is that possible because we're, we are, we are, everything is a matter of perspective. It's like a kaleidoscope. I can stand still and look at the, look at the sky from one perspective and see a certain amount of phenomena. But if I change my position and look, things appear differently. The same thing with events. So I'm a simulationist now. My very first video, I had not adopted any of this. One year later, after a motorcycle accident almost killed me, I was a simulationist. This is why my very second YouTube video is called Simulation Theory. And in that video, I made promises to the public. I made promises to my listeners. I, you can go back and read it. It's a short video, Simulation Theory, my very second video. But I'm very, very specific about what I'm going to bring to the table. And I've had many people send me emails and messages telling me, hey man, I lived up to those promises because I have. No one back then would have ever believed that I would release over 250 videos using historical timelines to show simulation theory. Wouldn't believe it. I don't believe it, but I'm still doing it.